Welcome to yet another episode in the Amiga CD32 review project. For the first time whilst doing this project, I'll be taking a look at a point-and-click adventure game, a genre that is near and dear to my heart. The game in question is Revolution Software's Beneath a Steel Sky, published in 1994 by Virgin. I fondly remember buying the PC floppy disk version of this point-and-click adventure game together with a friend back in the day, and I loved the story, setting and brilliant graphical style. The introduction to the story is told through a comic book by English comic book artist Dave Gibbons that was included in the box, and that's the case with the CD32 version as well. The animated intro, that's really just the images from the comic with a voiceover that was included in the PC CD-ROM version is sadly missing here, but that's alright. Just be sure that you read the comic first. Beneath a Steel Sky is set in a dystopian future where corporations battle for control of the city-states. Our protagonist, Robert Foster, has grown up amongst the outcasts outside of the cities, in an area called The Gap. Robert and his mother fled into The Gap when he was a small boy, but their helicopter crashed and his mother was killed. Luckily, the inhabitants of The Gap were friendly people, so they took him in. Now, many years later, Robert is a grown man and people from the city is looking for him. They hunt him down, kidnap him, bomb his relatives in The Gap and take him to the city. Soon, Robert finds himself in a second helicopter crash that he miraculously escapes unharmed. And now he's loose in the city looking for answers and revenge. The game is a classic point-and-click adventure. You walk around, talk to people, solve puzzles and thus slowly progress through the story. The game is controlled entirely with a mouse pointer and I for one could not get the gamepad controls to work even though the reviews mention there being such controls. Oh well. The controls are very straightforward. Left clicking inspects, right clicking interacts, and your inventory can be found by moving the mouse cursor to the top of the screen. Pretty standard controls you might say, but back then adventure games were mostly controlled by typing or by selecting verbs from a list, like you probably know it from the Lucasfilm games, so a simple control mechanism like this one was mostly a welcome thing. If, like me, you like a good science fiction story, you'll find much to love in Beneath a Steel Sky. The story is enticing, the speech and sound effects good for the time, and the graphical style is excellent. In fact, I only have one gripe about the game, but sadly it's kind of a major gripe. The loading times are atrocious. The game is screen-based, meaning that you only look at one screen at the time, and each time you walk into another screen you have to wait for at least 10 seconds. When you're backtracking through 10 screens to just try this one thing you thought of, this becomes infuriating. The loading problem also rears its ugly head each time the characters are speaking. What should have been quick, witty remarks become drawn-out robotic conversations because yeah, each sentence breakfast. is loaded separately. Just listen. I meant to clean it, but I forgot. I've done that so many times myself. Really? It's so easily done, isn't it? You're having breakfast, you're in a rush, and plop. Your card submerged in soggy cereal. Let's see what the reviewers back in the day had to say about Beneath a Steel Sky. Amiga Power gave the CD32 version of the game 90%, and they're more forgiving than me when it comes to the annoyance of the load times, though they do mention it by writing. Yep, same game, same lovely game. But now you can have speech instead of text, or just text, or both. The accessing time is also reduced and there's no disk swapping. You still have to wait a couple of seconds for the next bit to be pulled from the CD, and you have to wait for the next bit of speech to be found on the disk. But these holdups don't cause any major problems, so we'll forget about them. I can see how you may think of the screen loading times as a minor nuisance when comparing it to Amiga floppy disk versions, of course. CD32 Gamer gave the game 90% saying that perhaps the most significant improvement over the A1200 version is the speech. Whereas before all conversations appeared as text on screen, now you can actually hear what everybody says. This adds greatly to the atmosphere despite the motley selection of dialects on offer. Talk about your multiracial society. There's Yorkshiremen, Brummies, Australians, Belgians, Italians, you name it. Funny how the hero always seems to end up as well-spoken Americans though, innit? 
One of the best bits is the constant banter with the moaning Joey. He can be a right little swine, but we love him really. They do note the problem with the loading of speech though, and actually suggest that you can turn off the speech to speed up the game. CU Amiga gave the game a whopping 95% score, praising the graphics, story and voice work to the skies. They, like everybody else, do note the slight annoyance with the loading times though, but that seemingly doesn't detract any points from the score in their book. Beneath a Steel Sky is a great game, and had they added the intro from the PC CD-ROM version and fixed the loading times, I would have awarded it top score. As it stands though, I can't give it more than 4 out of 5, because the loading problem really does destroy the flow of the game. If you want to experience Beneath a Steel Sky, I suggest you get your hands on the PC CD-ROM version. It can be run in ScumVM and downloaded for free at scumvm.org.